The last words of any man are significant, but how much more when those last words are spoken by the God-man, the Lord Jesus? In today's study, we visit the cross and listen to the final words of Christ spoken just before his death. You will find that they hold tremendous truth and application for all of us who live on this side of the cross. Open your Bible and let's join Scott Pauley now at Calvary. When our Lord Jesus Christ was tried, or maybe I should say mistried because it was a mistrial in every way, but when he was tried, the Bible tells us that he answered not a word, no word for his own defense. But yet when he comes to the cross, he begins speaking. That's very significant because these are the last words of a dying Christ. And each of the seven sayings from the cross reveals something about the Lord Jesus. I I might even say this. It's all we really need to know at his death. This is, this is his final word. Would you like to know his final word? Now, you would think that one of his words from the cross in such suffering and agony would have been, Father, consume them. But instead, it's totally different. The day we come to this cry from the cross, Father, forgive them. Now, we've established already that every one of the words of Jesus always mean something. Certainly every one of the cries on the cross has a great message for us. Woman, behold thy son, behold thy mother. I thirst. By the way, I'll remind you that Jesus thirsted that way so that we would never have to thirst. He offers those who come to him in Revelation living water. Come to the fountain today, my friend. But Now we come to this early prayer, really, that is prayed from the cross early on in his suffering. Read with me today in Luke chapter number 23. The Bible says in verse 32, And there were also two other malefactors led with him to be put to death. And when they were come to the place, which is called Calvary, there they crucified him. And the malefactors, one on the right hand and the other on the left, then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment, and cast lots. And the people stood beholding, and the rulers also with them derided him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he be the Christ, the chosen of God. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar, and saying, If thou be the Christ, be the king of the Jews, save thyself. Do you hear all the cries at the cross? They're not all Christ. There's lots of sounds there, bitter sounds, cruel sounds. Uh, You hear the malefactors. We read in one of the accounts that they railed on him. Uh, You see the people there, the rulers deriding him. If he's really Christ, let him come down. Let him save himself. The soldiers mocking him. All these sounds, but sandwiched in the middle of all of those cries is this cry. Jesus says, Father, forgive them. What do we learn from this cry from the cross? Well, today... Let's just begin with the first word, shall we? Father. (laughs) Do you remember how Jesus taught his disciples to pray, Our Father, which art in heaven. And every time our Lord Jesus began his prayers, he began the same way, Father. Father. This was a statement of relationship. And when he addressed the Father, what is he doing? He's praying. So the first thing we know about this word from the cross is, it is a prayer. Now this is so tremendously helpful to all of us, all of us. And it is this, at the hardest moment of his life, in the most difficult hour, what does he do? He prays. What an example for us. Peter said that those who suffer here are to follow in the master's steps. Well, if you're going to follow the master's steps, then you're going to have to pray your way through because that's what Jesus did. He he prayed all the way through the Garden of Gethsemane. He prayed all the way through the experience at Golgotha. He prayed his way through. And dear one, if you're dealing with some difficulty today, and you're called on to die to self and pick up your own cross and follow Jesus, I'm going to tell you, you're going to have to learn to pray. You're going to have to learn to live in the presence of God and to lift up your eyes above the masses around you, above the circumstances that you're dealing with, and call on the Lord. I've marked in my Bible three interesting words. They all start with the same letter. They'll be easy for you to remember. In verse 33, we have the word there. 
The Bible says they were come to the place which is called Calvary. There they crucified him. In verse 34, the word then. Then said Jesus. So the word there, that's a place. The word then, that's the time. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them. There's the third one, them. That's the people. So there's a place there. There's a time then. There's a people, them. Watch this, please. He's praying there at the hardest place, at Calvary, at the cross. It's one thing to pray in the silence and solitude of the garden, but now he's in a public place and he's surrounded by enemies who have circled him around like wolves, devouring And there, that's where he prayed. It's easy to pray when you're in some quiet place alone with God, enjoying the fellowship of the Father. But remember this, even there, even at Calvary, even in the midst of the enemies, God prepares a table for us there, wherever there is today. You can pray in a busy place, in a place of great burdens and battles. You can pray. And then the Bible only says there, it says then, then said Jesus. It was at the moment that they crucified him that he started praying. You see, every suffering, every difficulty, every trial is an invitation to pray, to tell the Lord about it. So not only at the hardest place, but on the hardest day, Jesus is praying. And then here's the one that really blows my mind. Not just there and then, but he prays for them, for the hardest people. What a revelation of the heart of God for us. In fact, I've marked in my Bible almost like a list, all the people that surround this prayer. In verse 32, you have the the malefactors. That's the two criminals. In verse 35, you've got the people. In verse 35, you've got the rulers. In verse 36, you've got the soldiers. And lots of people have debated, well, who was he praying for? The answer is yes. He was praying for them all. He was praying for all of these terrible sinners. And yes, I believe he was praying for us. We'll talk more about that later in our study. Do you find it interesting that he did not pray against the sinners? He prayed for the sinners. Uh, Some of the psalms are known as the imprecatory psalms. They are prayers for judgment. They're prayers against God's enemies, against the wicked ones. And I think they're legitimate prayers. But I think it's very interesting here that Jesus is not praying a prayer of judgment. He's praying a prayer of mercy. Praise God for this. Jesus died praying. Do you know why? Because what he was doing on that cross was in itself a mediation for sin. The Bible says in Isaiah 53 that he made intercession for the transgressors. That's what he was doing there, friends. Do you understand the cross is the mercy seat? It's the place where the advocate went to pray for us. He prayed for religious people who did not know him. He prayed for worldly people who did not want to know him. He prayed for us all. All of the extremes were gathered around that cross, and In a representative way, we were there. You were there. I was there. Our sin was there. Jesus prayed for you. So let's make two applications today. First of all, you should take heart that Jesus prayed for you. Maybe you feel like you're such an awful sinner you can never be forgiven. I want you to know Jesus knows how to get his prayers answered. He was dying for the very thing he was asking for, and Jesus is praying for you today. And that ought to encourage your heart. That ought to give you faith to trust him, to believe on him. That ought to give you faith to rest in him today. Robert Murray McShane said, If I could hear Jesus praying for me in the next room, I wouldn't fear a thousand enemies. Well, the distance makes no difference, he said. Jesus is praying for me. Listen to Jesus pray for you at the throne today. Father, forgive them. That will give you heart and hope and help. There's a second application, and it is this. If you're a Christian and you're on the hardest day of your life and the hardest circumstance and the hardest people you've ever dealt with, Why don't you just do what Jesus did? And why don't you pray? May the cry of the cross affect us all deeply today. Can you hear the cries from the cross? In each of these Holy Spirit-inspired words, God has a message for us. We hope that through this study, you will come to know and love the Lord Jesus in a deeper way. For more information on a personal relationship with Christ or for helpful devotional resources, please visit us at enjoyingthejourney.org. You will have access to hundreds of articles, full-length Bible messages, and the complete Enjoying the Journey broadcast library. Remember that only as you follow God's Word will you find Christ's joy.